are you or your loved ones suffering from pain? As I don't want to say again, but obesity, okay? <laughs> uh, liver dysfunction, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, stroke, migraine, dental issues, or cancer. Well, all these conditions could entail inflammation. Inflammation is a root cause of debilitating and life-threatening ailments. Today, we are honored to have Ms. Marie Canatani, a certified nutritionist, to shed light on this topic. Ms. Marie Canatani earned her master's degree in nutritional science and bachelor's degree in applied bioscience at Tokyo University of Agriculture. Currently, she is the associate director of International Sales at Tara Values Corporation, Tokyo, Japan, where she is in charge of the global market, including US, EU, and Asia. Without much further ado, let's put our hands together to welcome Ms. Marie Canatan. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Marie Canatani. I'm a nutritionist and also a sales uh, associated director of Stella Values Corporation, Japanese bio technology company. I'm a Japanese, I'm not good at English, so I'm very nervous today, but uh, I will do my best. So anyway, I'm very pleasure to be here to talk about threats and reality of inflammation, how nature can help. Cancer, pneumonia, ischemic heart diseases, cerebrovascular diseases, and hypertensive diseases. What do you imagine from these diseases? It is the top five cause of death in Singapore in 2015. And these top five COD have stayed at the same at least last four years. In 2015, more than 6,000 people died of cancer. 3,600 people died of pneumonia. And 3,000 people died of heart disease. In my country, Japan, the top COD are similar as listed here. But in the world, the cause of this is a bit different because it includes the developed countries. But Heart disease is also the top cause of death in the world. And 7.4 million people died of ischemic heart diseases in the world in 2012. But these diseases were not the top cause of death for homo sapiens in many, many years ago. But nowadays, they are. So let's move on and find why. Thousands of years ago, the threats to Homo sapiens were starvation, infections, and exhaustion. Eating back then was all about surviving. <clears throat> they would chase and kill animals for themselves to keep living. But nowadays, our life has been changed in many ways, in diet, exercise habit, and global environment, and also the development of chemicals. So our life has been fulfilled with many things, but those are not just good things. They came along with some side effects. Let's look at what is happening in our body, taking obesity as an example. <clears throat> These yellow balls are fat cell, scientifically called as adipocyte. Fat cell is saving type cell. Our DNA is designed to store energy as fat cell, which is the most effective way to avoid starvation. However, at the present day, we have too much energy saved up and less exercise to let it burn. So 
this new lifestyle can be the stress for our body as well as fat cell. So when the body weight is increased, the fat cell feels stress because the body weight increased because of uh, too much energies or lack of exercise or oxidative stress and so on. Then this fat cell feels stress. So when fat cell feels stress, it is bloated like this image. And at the same time, the fat cell releases the secreted factors to activate the macrophage. Macrophage is a kind, it's a type of white cell which attacks to, uh, to abnormal cells or invaded bacteria. And this bloated fat cell is recognized as abnormal cell so that this macrophage attacks to fat cell. But macrophage is trapped between the fat cell then macrophage cannot move. So macrophage became panic. Then this macrophage released the strong cytokines such as TNFA alpha or interleukin-6. And these cytokines are very much related to the inflammation. And these cytokines also activate the macrophage again. Then macrophage attacks to fat cell trapped again and became panic, then released the cytokines. So this is a vicious circle. And what's the interesting point of this mechanism is there is no enemy on it. Everything happens in our immune system. And the process happens more or less in our body so the inflammation, as a result, is called as chronic inflammation. And one important nuclear factor is related to this process, which is NFKB. It is scientifically proven that curcumin can suppress this NFKB directly, and consequently, it enables to control chronic inflammation, which is very much related to many, can many diseases, like Alzheimer's, heart failures, and cancers. The keyword of chronic inflammation has been widely known now. It was featured in one of the most important scientific magazine, Nature, and it said, inflammation forms the basis of many physiological and pathological processes, and chronic, chronic inflammation underlies many human diseases. Also, it was featured in one of the most famous newspaper, the Wall Street Journal. It said, what do heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, stroke, and cancer in common? Scientists have linked each of those to a condition known as chronic inflammation. And they are studying how high fat foods and excess body weight may increase the risk of fatal disorders. So the relationship between chronic inflammation and diseases is getting to be known, not only in scientific field, but also in common. Let's see the top cause of death again. Cancer, pneumonia, ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular heart diseases, and hypertensive diseases. The basic condition of these diseases is chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is related to many diseases, not only the top cause of these diseases, 
but also modern diseases and conditions, such as diabetes, Alzheimer's, fatigue, liver diseases, and asthma, and so on. Actually, it is well known, in, especially in pharmaceutical industries, that control of chronic inflammation is very important for the treatment as well as prevention of many diseases. So maybe the best solution is drug to stop chronic inflammation. The answer is no. Of course, there are drugs to stop the inflammation, like steroid. But as I explained, the chronic inflammation is caused by our autoimmune system. And it happens more or less in our body always. So if the chronic inflammation is stopped completely, that would affect to our immune system and also causes side effects. So the important thing is not to stop chronic inflammation completely, but to control or suppress it mildly. Then how to do that? My answer to that question is natural products. Incorporate natural functional products into our daily life. Actually, there are many scientific studies of natural ingredients for the control of chronic inflammation, such as omega-3, turmeric, cranberry, coenzyme Q10, and so on. Today, I would like to focus on turmeric as it is one of the hottest botanical. And it has been studied not only turmeric, but also its active compound, curcumin. Curcumin is an um, active compound and also polyphenol in turmeric, scientifically called curcuma longa. As turmeric has unique taste and color, it has been used as a spice, flavor, and also coloring agent. You know, of course, it is used in Singapore laksa, which I had for dinner last night. And on the other hand, turmeric and curcumin have been used medicinally as traditional medicine in India, which is called as Ayurveda. And also it has been used in China. In my country, Japan, turmeric has also been consumed as health product, especially in south part of Japan. So the functionality of turmeric has been known and utilized in our life before it was scientifically proven. Curcumin is one of the hottest ingredients now. Since around 2000, Many researchers, not only in Asia, but also in the US and Europe, have studied the functionalities and efficacy of curcumin and turmeric. The numbers of white paper for the research of curcumin and turmeric has been increasing almost 15% every year. Last year, 2015, 1,162 papers were published. And this year, over 900 papers were already published by August. So it means three or four papers about curcumin and turmeric are published every day. Here are remarkable studies on curcumin. 
Curcumin studies are not only basic or animal studies, but also human clinical trials. There are studies on healthy aging, healthy aging, such as cardiovascular health, heart diseases, bone and joint health, sports nutrition, and liver health. All of these categories are related to chronic inflammation, and the studies indicated that curcumin was effective to control these conditions. There are a lot of studies of curcumin on cancer for prevention, treatment, and quality of life improvement. As cancer is always the top cause of death in developed countries, it is very active area for researchers. And recently, the numbers of brain health using curcumin that study has been increasing rapidly. One of the interesting studies showed that curcumin intake for 18 months improved memory and cognitive functions on mild cognitive impairment and age-associated memory impairment studies. These subjects are not exact dementia and Alzheimer's, but they are reserves. So this study indicated that curcumin may be effective for the prevention of dementia and Alzheimer's. Also, there are interesting studies on oral health, such as periodontal disease and hangover control, uh, skin health, and also respiratory health. So let me show some remarkable studies in detail. This is a lot study on lung cancer. 20 lung cancer model mice were divided to four groups. The blue group is control without any treatment. Green group is drug group. Mice were administrated drug for lung cancer, which is erlotinib. And red is curcumin group. Mice were administrated curcumin. And the last one, pink group, is a drug plus curcumin group. Mice were administra administrated both drug and curcumin. The, these mice were designed to be affected to lung cancer. So the estimated tumor weight is, was increasing every day. And in 14 days, the body weight in each group were not changed, but estimated tumor weight were increased in all groups. But when you look at the lead group, curcumin group, you can see that the increase of tumor weight is suppressed at the same level of the green drug group. And when you look at the pink group, you can see the curcumin enhanced the efficacy of drug significantly. The next is a human clinical study on cardiovascular health. In this clinical trial, postmenopausal women were selected for subject. The immune system of menopausal women is protected by the female hormones like estrogen. But secretion of female hormone is dramatically reduced after menopause. So the menopausal women have more risk for many diseases. That is the reason why postmenopausal women is the subject of this study. And 32 subjects were assigned to three groups. The blue group is control. They have no treatment. 
and green group is exercise group. Subject underwent aerobic exercise training three times, at least three times per week. And red group is curcumin group. Subject took curcumin supplement capsule every day. FMD, flow mediated dilation, was measured as an index of the risk of atherosclerosis. When FMD percent is low, it means uh, it has more risk for atherosclerosis. And in eight weeks, FMD on control group is decreased from the baseline. But that of in exercise group and curcumin group is increased significantly. And curcumin group actually showed the same improvement, same levels of improvement of exercise. As you know that uh, exercise is effective to prevent arteriosclerosis, but curcumin showed the same effect just taking capsule every day. The next is human clinical study on liver health. 19 healthy adults, but slightly higher level of liver function index were selected for this trial. They took curcumin capsule every day without changing diet and exercise habit. One month later, their liver function index, AST, ALT, and gamma GTP were significantly improved by 12%, 60%, and 50% respectively. When we look at the individual data, the index of subject with high level at the baseline were decreased significantly. But that of the normal level was not changed. Unlike drugs, curcumin has moderating effects. So it does not decrease the liver function index on all subjects, but only on the high index subjects like them. The last study is joint health study. 50 mild knee osteoarthritis patients were assigned to two groups. Red group is curcumin group. They took curcumin supplement capsule every day. And blue group is placebo group. They took placebo capsule, which means a dummy capsule every day. This study was double-blind randomized placebo controlled trial, which means all subjects in both groups and all medical staffs did not know which group took which capsule. People feel better when they take capsule, even if it is dummy capsule. And this effect is called as placebo effect. So in order to see actual effect without placebo effect, it is very important that to, to design the study as double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial. And in this trial, in eight weeks, the pain scores and also the dependence of drug for pain were significantly improved in curcumin group compared to placebo group. Subjects were allowed to take drug if necessary, but more subjects on curcumin group did not need drug. So it has been proven that curcumin is very potential natural compound to control chronic inflammation and to be effective 
for many diseases related to chronic inflammation. But there is a big issue on curcumin, which is poor absorption. Turmeric contains only less than 5% curcumin in its root, and also 99% of curcumin is not absorbed and excreted from body. It means we need to take a lot of turmeric every day to get the benefit. The answer is no, because nowadays there are many kinds of turmeric and cooking products such as beverage, powders, and supplement. They contain more concentration than fresh turmeric or a standard turmeric powder for spice. In addition, there are also new technologies to improve the absorption in body. I would like to explain one of the interesting technologies. First of all, the reason why curcumin is not absorbed well in body is because it is not soluble in water. Curcumin is normally available in big particles like this. The particle size is about 10 micrometer. And this big particle is not soluble in water, so that it cannot attach on the wall of intestine, so that it's not absorbed well. But by using new technology, the curcumin powder is micronized. The particle size is like 500 nanometer, and also the surface of particle is coated by the natural plant's extract. And because of this modification, curcumin is dispersed in water very well. Then, as a result, it is absorbed very well because the small particle can be attached on the wall of intestine. Actually, this new high absorption curcumin was developed by my company, TheraValues, and this curcumin is named as TheraCumin. So let's see how it is different from standard curcumin. So this is a movie. You can see the curcumin powder of high absorption type curcumin is dispersed in water very well. The left one is also movie, but standard curcumin powder is stayed on the top of water and never soluble at all. I like this movie, it's beautiful. And this is what happens in, in your intestine. Because of this good dispersibility by new technology, it was scientifically confirmed that this curcumin is 27 times more absorbed in intestine than standard curcumin. So like this curcumin, there are several new technologies to improve the absorption, and these products are available on the market as supplement or health food. So thanks to the technologies, we do not need to take too much turmeric dishes. We can utilize new technologies and products into our lifestyle. Actually, the studies I showed in the previous slides were done by using this high absorption curcumin. So that in clinical trials, subjects did not need to take many curcumin or turmeric products but just took a couple of capsules.
One of the examples of high absorption curcumin products available in Singapore is Cordell's Seracumin. This product contains 27 times higher absorption curcumin. Conclusion of my presentation. For healthy life, of course, good exercise and good diet are very important. But in my opinion, we do not need to be too strict for these two things. Because we are living in a modern era, there are many good natural health products with new technologies. So we can include such natural products to compensate and balance our healthy life. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kanatani. We're now opening the floor for question and answer. Do you have any questions for Ms. Kanatani? We can have two more, two questions. Anyone? Okay, we have a question right here. No, uh, I was told that those who are on blood thinner are not, uh, uh, are not supposed to take this curcumin. Is it true? Uh, those people who are on blood thinner, statins, so uh, are not supposed to take this curcumin. I was told that. Is it true? Those uh, people taking statins or blood thinners. Yeah, like aspirin. <laughs> mean that, uh, with drug? Yes. What are the, perhaps, what drugs, or those people who are taking drugs, what adverse effect would this uh, supplement would give? If they're taking statins, like aspirin, like blood thinners, those kind of things. Those drugs that makes your, your blood... Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, in the case you take this kind of supplement together with drug, I recommend to talk with your doctor first. Because uh, some drug have a side effect only with the supplement. So I recommend you to talk with your doctor first of all. So if the doctor advises you not to take it with blood thinners, please follow the advice of your doctors. Any more questions from our crowd? We can accommodate another question. If we don't have... Is it possible to uh, overdose on the, the capsules? Uh, you know, turmeric is natural product and um, we have no... Uh, ADI for this product, so no limit for the dose of this product. Well, actually, we did a toxicity test. Sorry. Yeah, we did toxic study using the mice. The answer to your question is no limitation for this supplement, but not to take too much. So we did the toxicity study with these products and no mice dead with these products, even with the highest dose. That is answer to your question. How many times per day? If I'll be taking this, how many capsules okay. per uh, For taking the Cordell Seracumin as an example, this product contains 60 milligram curcumin in one capsule. And we recommend uh, one capsule each in the morning and in the evening for controlling the normal health. And for the treatment, we recommend two capsules in the morning and two capsules in the evening. Any more questions? Okay, thank you, Ms. Kanatani. Thank you. Let's give our hands to Ms. Kanatani. 
On behalf of Cordell and Prime Magazine, we would like to present this humble gift to you, Ms. Kanatani. Thank you for sharing your time with us and sharing your knowledge with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, let us give Ms. Kanatani a round of applause. Okay.